Guess what, guess what, guess what, guess what? It's tomato planting day. I've been waiting for the weather to be okay and for it not to rain 800 inches a day for a couple of days so that the ground could dry a little bit. And it's time, it's time. Look, tomatoes to be planted. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's plant tomatoes. I don't have a raised bed or an in-ground bed where I brought in like truckloads of nice, fluffy, wonderful soil and all that stuff because that costs a lot of money. Not just a matter of not having it, but also like I don't mind going the slow way. So this is the fourth year that I'm planting tomatoes here. And the first year I did come in with a little bit of soil on top, but I've been adding compost, cardboard, mulch over and over in this area. You know, the tomato only needs this much space. Now I plant my tomatoes deep, we'll come back to that but into the planting hole, I will add some soil that I have mixed. So this is four parts of potting soil, about two parts of cocoa core, about a part and a half, two parts of vermicompost. And then I called that two gallons because it came almost halfway up in my five gallon bucket. And so I amended with azomite, kelp meal, alfalfa meal and um, rock phosphate as if this were two gallons. Now, something that I didn't notice when I was mixing it is that my potting soil had ants in it. And I don't know how I missed that. I, I even like hand mixed this and now it is teeming with ants and I looked and they are in the potting soil bag. So I have some, so I have some first Saturday lime that I am going to sprinkle on top of this area after I water everything in. But for now, I'm, I'm not gonna remix. I'm not gonna try to get different soil. I did forget to put my mycos into this. And so I'll just dip the plants as I am about to put them in the ground. Okay, so today we're planting three types of cherry tomatoes and four types of slicer tomatoes. So let's take a look at them really, really quick. I'm gonna be doing sun gold too. I've never done sun golds before. They're supposed to be great. So we're gonna give those a try. Black cherry. This is absolutely my favorite cherry tomato. It has a really rich, smoky flavor. It's like a little Cherokee purple that starts producing before Cherokee purple start producing. They take more heat, they take more drought, flood, whatever. They're more tolerant. And I know, yeah, it's okay, so it's a cherry tomato, not a big tomato. Don't care, makes tomatoes faster, yay. I'm gonna be doing gobstoppers. These are a yellowy green um, round cherry tomato. These little stowaways, they sprouted on the same day that this one was ready to be potted up. It was weird, who cares, they're here now. So that's why there's little stowaways in there. When I plant out the big one, I'll just put these back into the pot. The big kids. Let's start with green zebra. Green zebra is a small-ish, some people call it a saladette. It's a smallish, sou it's a smallish slicer tomato. It's green and striped. It has bright flavor. Yes, bright is a flavor in my brain. Carbon, bigger than green zebra, smaller than Cherokee purple, darker than Cherokee purple. Very, very tasty, super rich flavor. Love these. This is the one I was really looking forward to growing this year. Speaking of our darling Cherokee purple, this one has a stowaway because I run out of pots. Again, when I plant this one, I'll just put this one back into the pot. And then Thorburn's terracotta. These make pretty good sized and they're terracotta colored. They're orangish. They have some like a little bit of browns on them. Complex flavor, really, really delicious. I love them. A note on tags. This is the fat Sharpie marker. I used the fine point Sharpies last year. Did not work, but the fat Sharpie always works for me. This is a two year old plant tag written in fat Sharpie, just so you know how it does. Let's get into these. I plant my tomatoes deep and I will show you how we do that. Here's the little plant that I'm gonna put in and the trellis. I'm not gonna be tying it today. I'll let it get taller before I tie it. When I say that I plant my tomatoes deep, I'm gonna plant it up to about here. Tomatoes will grow roots along their stems. So these little hairs on the stem, these want to become roots. So if I put the tomato in the ground up to here, all of this is gonna produce roots. That will help the plant. It'll have more roots to help it collect water. If it feels like it needs extra nutrients, it'll be able to pull wider. Also, keep in mind that mycos do these things for us too. Mycorrhizal fungi 
creates networks under the ground between the roots of plants and helps the roots of plants communicate with each other and it helps plants regulate their moisture and their nutrients. So super, super helpful little teamwork between deep planting and using mycos. I'm gonna pull my tag out and set it aside for right now. I'm gonna make a little Y with my hand. The stem's gonna go in the middle. I'm sorry, it's very glary. The stem's gonna go in the middle of the Y. Squeeze and release. Just in time, I've got a lot of roots there, but not so much that it's root bound. Now, since I am planting up to here, I want to remove anything that would be under the ground. The low branches come off. And then we have this. So I'm planning to go to here. If I was putting a bigger tomato in the ground, I would have laid it down for a couple of days and then that'll let it start to bend and come up and then you can plant horizontally and the same trick will happen with the roots. But mine aren't too big, so I'm gonna plant horizontally up to here. All right, so I forgot to bring a bowl for the mycos, so I'm gonna put some in my hand. And this really does work better if you have a bowl to put the mycos in, but here we are. And then that will start to spread and make a network under the ground. I have my hori hori, I'm gonna make a hole right here. If you ever do this, remember that it is sharp and it will cut you. I, I learned that the hard way a few years ago. Because I've been working on this ground for a few years, you can see it's still very clay. We already have some fungi going in here and it's not, it's not solid clay. It can break up. <laughs> And move a little bit more. About like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna break up the roots a little. Not much. A little soil in the hole. Here we go. Press it down. Bring the soil around it. Definitely ants. tag in place. First tomato in the ground. <laughs> I single stem my tomatoes until they're a foot or two high and then I double stem. So I'll be cutting off all the suckers and yes I even do it on my cherry tomatoes. I do it on my indeterminate slicers and cherries. I don't really grow determinants because they're already at one time. I don't have the spoons for processing a whole plant worth of tomatoes at once. So I do indeterminates, that way I can kind of pace myself with the harvest. When this gets about this big, I will let it keep one sucker and then I'll train one up and I'll train one over. All right, so there's our first little friend in the ground. Because I single stem part of the way up and then double stem, I do my tomatoes about 18 inches apart. Hori Hori is about 12 inches long. So I'm gonna do the full length of the Hori Hori plus the length of the blade. So my next plant will go over here, right about there. So now comes the aesthetic decision. I did a dark cherry tomato. Do I go with a dark slicer or do I put a light slicer here? I think we're gonna put the Thorburns here. So on this one, I think about here will be good. So I need to make my hole at least this deep. Little worm. Falling back in. Now you'll notice that I make sure that there's no leaves touching the ground. Leaves on the ground is one of the biggest ways that tomatoes pick up diseases. There's a Thorburns. So we're just gonna keep working down the line. I'm not gonna talk you through it so much now that you know what I'm doing, but I will tell you, I did get sick of dunking the roots into the mycos, so I added it into the bucket and um, the ants didn't like it. <laughs> Wherever I dropped mycos, the ants were like, no. So maybe that will help. I'm gonna do Cherokee purple next. So that means I'm gonna have to repot this one. No big deal. All I'm gonna do is I'll get the big one planted and I'll just break off that side and then I've got the soil right here so I'll just go back with it. Oh hey, there's one thing I wanted to tell y'all. This is really exciting. 
one of y'all went over to buy me a coffee and left me a really nice donation. I just want to let you know how much that really means to me. I appreciate it. it it's not just money. It's, it's somebody saying that they appreciate what I do and that it made me feel so good. So you know who you are who bought me quite a few coffees on Buy Me A Coffee. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. I want you to know that I am buying a new camera this year and I have started saving toward that. And so your donation went towards the new camera. Thank you so much, you person who donated that money. Thank you. The link to my Buy Me A Coffee is down below in the description. As of right now, all of the donations in Buy Me A Coffee are going towards a new camera. But very soon, I'm gonna have a big announcement for y'all. I've been putting it off, but I think it's better to tell y'all sooner rather than later. So that's coming. In the next couple of weeks, I will have some very big news for you. And at that point, I will start allowing you to let me know on Buy Me A Coffee whether you want the money to go to the new camera or to the big announcement. But that's not yet. That's coming soon. Keep checking back. Prune off everything low without hurting the other plant. There we go. Hey, super. See, I've got the little one over here and the big one over here. So I'm just going to pull apart as carefully as I can. And then this one is ready to go back into the tray. And I'm going to let y'all meet Super. Come here, Super. This is Super. It's short for Superfluous Kitty. Last summer, we got three kittens from the same litter. About a week later, she showed up in the bushes and there was terrible storms so we brought her in for the storms and then uh, then it got cold and then she came in to avoid the cold now she lives in my bedroom but she's really kind of skittish so if mama goes outside super wants to be outside oh baby but she's mostly inside now yeah hi baby say hi okay Moving on down the row. But there's so many honeybees around right now and I'm so excited. I haven't seen them in a while. Yay honeybees! The gobstoppers are closer together than those cherries or than those um, Cherokee purples were. If they get really close like this, you just have to work at it a little bit more, but they will come apart. And I usually do this with a bowl of water to loosen up. Oh, be stubborn, make faces, right? Okay, hopefully those will reroot. If not, it's okay. These were my extras. I'm gonna put them back into the same pot because I'm afraid if I stick them in separate pots, they won't all be labeled and I'll forget. So I just put the soil in there and then I'm just gonna make a little hole to dip those down in there. Where did I put those tomatoes? I lost them on the ground. That's terrible. Bad tomato mommy. In there, you go way down there. You got plenty of room. So I just kind of separated them within the pot. All right, and then I'm just gonna go stick my little repotted friends back up on the, the seedling table. Be right back. All right, so somebody just started something loud over there. So I'm just gonna keep planting and we'll see if I can tell you anything else. So I am here with the gobstopper and it is going in this hole that I have prepared. When the plants are ready, I, I don't have them yet, but when the plants are ready, I will be coming back. It's the go-kart. So I will be coming back with dill, to help with the um, tomato hornworms and with basil to help with pollination and with borage to help with both and probably some sweet alyssum and I think I might even put a whole bunch of nasturtiums in here to help with ground cover. So there are there are um, some companion plants that will be coming in. They're just not ready yet. <laughs> I do have garlic chives here as a companion. These offer scent confusion and the flowers attract bees whenever they do flower, but that's gonna be later in the season. Can you see how this leaf is just touching the ground at the end? I'm gonna cut it off there, just part of it. So this can still collect light. All right, so this was the gobstopper. So we have black cherry, thorburns, Cherokee purple and then gobstopper. So I'm gonna put the carbon here. Mm 
I know that potting soil is expensive, but it has a good texture and it has a lot of nutrients in it and I'm not filling the whole bed with it. So if I had potted up my tomatoes one more time, I would have used more than this much potting soil to pot them up again. So I don't feel bad like I'm wasting potting soil. It's, it's gonna feed the plant and get it a good start. All right, I'm gonna go green zebra next and then sun gold, I'm gonna pop way down at the other end and then we'll be all finished. The ground is damp because we've had a lot of rain. This is helping the soil settle around the roots. And then I'm gonna put that first Saturday lime on, like I said, because of all the ants in the um, potting soil that I mixed. And also in the last hole, I found a whole bunch of ants down in the ground as well. That first Saturday lime will help with that. Let's get that on there. A little scoop. Okay, so that does it. That's how I plant my tomatoes. Is this the absolute only and best way to plant tomatoes? No, definitely not. It's the way that I do it. I plant them deep so they can have more roots. I plant them 18 to 24 inches apart because of the way that I prune them, single stem up to the first couple of feet and then double stemmed. That helps in our climate because we can be humid. We are dry a lot of the summer, but we can be very humid. So reducing the amount of foliage at the bottom of the plant really, really, really helps with that. Now, once they get up to the top of the fence or once fall hits, I stop pruning and I let them do what they want. At that point, if they haven't gotten sick yet, I feel like I'm just on borrowed time anyways. I will keep you updated on how they go. I will come back to show you how I prune and tie them again. I have a video from last year. I'll put it at the end here for how to prune and tie your tomatoes. And remember to keep checking back for that big announcement that is coming. Check the community tab. I will put an announcement of the announcement when it's time. I think I'm just gonna sit here in these like wild garlics because they just smell so good. And I will let you go enjoy your day. Happy planting. Later y'all. <laughs>